Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Blackout Hong Kong, which is the latest big box Euro style game from design superstar Alex Fister, and I'm going to be doing a solo run through today so you can see what it's all about. Although, before I get going, I strongly recommend you turn your subtitles onto the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, well then, welcome to Hong Kong everybody, and as you can see, there's a blackout. In fact, the power has been out for over 48 hours now. And we are just regular community organizers who have decided to take matters into our own hands because the government has not been able to step in and get things straight. So we are going to be launching our own initiative, not to restore power. There's nothing we can do about that. But we are just going to be trying to distribute goods as needed to the people to try to keep fear and chaos under control and score victory points along the way because sooner or later the power is going to come back right and that's when we find out who gets the key to the city whoever helped the most in this time of need now like i said i'm going to be doing a solo run through and don't worry folks who might be worried uh the solo game plays almost exactly the same as a multiplayer game this is largely a multiplayer solitary experience and so there's a couple little things that change actually no really only one thing that changes, and I'll certainly mention it, but otherwise you should get a pretty good idea of how the game flows from a player's perspective, even though I'm only demonstrating one. And this is me over here. Now at the beginning of the game, I have Emergency Plan A, which has given me three different objectives I could be trying to pursue, each one of which will bring in some cash that I can use in a pinch to help out in other areas. I also got two random other objectives. There's starter objectives, you can see, because there's a little tiny S right there. And and if I can complete these objectives, which in this case is get food and medicine to this area and get water and fuel to this area, then I will recruit these people who came from that area and they will join all the other volunteers and specialists who have decided to help out their fellow Hong Kongians. Alrighty, so I've got these, these are random, I've got this, and I've already got three people out in the field, three other volunteers, a, uh, a blue collar, a red collar, and a yellow collar, that's what Jen and I call them, uh, but they're not available to me right now, but soon they will be joined by these other folks. And the board itself has been randomly seated as well, and also as part of setup, every player gets to choose one location that they have stabilized right from the get-go and I chose this area right here because since I have emergency plan A one of my objectives here is to get a line of stabilized locations connecting this crisis center A all the way up to here so I'm gonna be trying to stabilize D here B and then this uh, no-name area and then this area over here because that's one of my objectives and now I should also say the game comes with a storyline campaign where you play through five missions. Now, it's a, it's a pretty light story. I mean, you could think of what Alexander Pfister did in the uh, Oh My Goods expansion. Uh, it basically just gives you five different semi-unique setups that you play through in order that tell a very simple story of you know the, the first week of this blackout because the power is going to be down that long. And in this particular scenario, it's chapter one, the first 48 hours of the blackout, there are a couple of specific things I have to do to be able to win since I'm playing solo. Of course, when you're playing against human players, you win if you get the most points and the power comes back on at the end of the game. But here, to win, I have to... I am required to complete all three of these objectives. Um, normally, when you're playing in a multiplayer game, well, you can do them because they're a great bonus, but you might not chase after completing this because you've got other things you can do. I can't win, though, unless I complete Emergency Plan A. And also, before the game is over, I have to earn 75 points. If I don't make 75 points of good deeds that I've done and uh, you know complete all three of these, I am not going to make it. Now, the other unique thing about this is the blackout deck here is a little bit thicker than normal. The length of the game is determined by this deck. It's a timer. Once it runs out, that triggers the end of the game. But as part of setup, while there's a standard amount of cards you're supposed to put in here, based on player count, you can put more or less in if you want a longer or shorter game. And for this setup, three additional cards have been put in here, which means I get one extra round to try to get everything done that I need to get done. Alrighty, so enough of the setup. Let's get going. And everybody's player board is exactly the same. 
And it's really, really nice because our player boards double as player aids because they walk us through steps one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight of every round. And they even remind us what we're doing. So here we are at step one of the first round, roll resources and plan cards. So rolling resources means I gotta roll these bones. Let's see what I get. Alrighty. So, oh, first of all, when you roll, if you get any duplicates, you have to re-roll those duplicates until there aren't any. So roll again, and there we go. So yellow uh, volunteers can go out and get us water. Blue volunteers can go out and get us fuel, and red volunteers can go out and get us tools. And so none of those volunteers in this particular round could go out and get us food, medicine, or books, which is not, not literal books, but knowledge, what to do, you know, how to fix things, how to repair generators. You know, th this is just a general stand in for knowledge that's good in an emergency. So we can't go out and get any knowledge, medicine, or food. We have access to those. Right. Now everybody sees that. And then everybody decides in private what three or four later on in the game actions they want to do. And that means which of these four remaining volunteers that I've got as part of my starting setup or these three specialists, a scout, a mechanic, and a doctor, which of these seven am I going to send out into the streets at night to try to collect these resources or do special actions in the case of purple specialist cards? So, what do I want to do? Well, let's see here. I... Remember, I've got these two objectives. I need fuel and water to complete this objective, so I think I'd like to collect some fuel and water. That's pretty handy. So I think I'm going to send out my blue volunteers. They'll be able to get me some fuel. I'll send out my yellow volunteers to get me some water, because once I get that food and water, I can complete this. Now, this needs food and medicine. I don't have access to those. So while I could send out either of these red volunteers to go get some tools, I don't need those tools right now. So I think they, these two volunteers are going to be joined by a specialist. Now if I send out the doctor, I can spend medicine to heal one of my team that's currently in the hospital and injured. As part of setup, my team leader is injured, as is my much more powerful blue card, which can actually get me two resources instead of one, like my normal one. So if I had any medicine, I could send my doctor out to bring one of these into the fold so I'll have them in another round. Or I could send out my mechanic, who will just make three bucks for me, and if I spend tools, will get me an additional three. The more money I have, the more I can spend it, especially to help rebuild infrastructure over here, which I'll talk about in a bit. Or finally, I could scout, which means I'd have to spend one fuel or one book, i.e. knowledge, to basically grab a GPS token. And these can help me out later on when I'm doing the scout action. Plus, the, well, this scout will go out and get me two bucks as well. So I want to put one of them to work. Uh, you know what? I think, I'm, I, I think, I think, I think, I'm going to get me the doctor. I'm going to send the doctor to work. Am I? Yes, I am. All right, so these four are staying home. They're not necessarily doing anything for me right now, but we'll come back to them in a second. And now, I've chosen who I'm going to send out. I know what they're going to do, but I also have to assign them to one of these three slots. Because these are groups of folks I've already got out there in the darkness trying to help people. So I could assign the doctor to be part of this group, or uh, another blue volunteer, or the yellow volunteer. And uh, another, I'm going to start a group of people over here, and I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to continue building these two crews. Now, which one, where do I want to put these? Well, the main consideration there has to do with building a team that could help me complete objectives. Remember over here, emergency plan A? I already talked about one of the things I've got to do. I've got to get a string of secured sites from A to A. So I know I have to do that. But there's another one. If I build a particular type of crew, which requires two yellow, one blue, and one red, if I can build that particular crew, then I can complete this objective and get five. Now here's the problem. I have one yellow, so I could add this yellow to this particular crew. And hey, then I only need one more yellow guy in this crew, and I will have completed that objective because part of emergency plan A is getting this particular combination of people together so they can go out and do some important thing that needs to be done. My problem is, my other yellow is already tied up over here, so I would have to recall him before I could deploy him down here as well. And the problem with that is, at the end of my turn, 
I'll be able to refresh my hand, which means I can recall some of my crew back to join my hand. But when I do that, it has to be the biggest group. So if I were to recall at the end of the round, this would be the group I'd recall, and it would collapse on itself, and I wouldn't get a chance to do this. So that's a problem. Now, so I don't think that's something I can necessarily chase after right now. I can't build up for that. I'll have to worry about that later. However, I can look over here. There are nine cards on display that were drawn as part of setup from this blackout deck. And of these, do any of them require specific crew? Yes, this one. Uh, this one is a, not a great one. It requires a red and two yellow. Shoot! So, um, oh, oh, well, actually, no, no, no. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's not bad. With this guy in mind, noting that he needs a particular, he needs four bucks and this particular crew to solve whatever problem he's trying to deal with in the blackout. Uh, well, considering that, I think I'll have my yellow join the other yellow. Now, you put these face down because everybody is doing this planning simultaneously, and nobody should know what anybody's planning to do. So I'll put the yellow there. Now, remember I said this is going to be the biggest crew here, which means it's the first one to come back, which means do I want to get my doctor back fast or do I want to get my volunteer back fast? Now the doctor is great because he can get me more people out, you know, out of uh you know, out of the hospital. But the problem is the doctor needs medicine. Medicine is the rarest, hardest resource to get. Um, because if you look over here, this shows you the distribution of the dye faces, the yellow die will never generate medicine. The the financial assistance, the uh, the financial volunteers that are helping us, the, the money people, they can never get us medicine. And um, the red and the blue, they each only have one shot at getting it. Whereas you can see, like there's one, two, three opportunities to get food out of here. Uh, medicine is the hardest thing to get. So while a doctor is incredibly powerful, it is very difficult to use a doctor. So I don't think I plan on getting the doctor back, so I'm just going to put the doctor back over here. I'll get her back eventually, but it won't be for a while, and that means I'll get this volunteer back faster. All right, so everybody's doing this at the same time. Everybody's planning, and once everybody's done, we've finished the first section, and now we deploy our volunteers and specialists. And in turn order, everybody reveals what they've done, and you don't have to do these actions in any particular order. You can go left to right, right to left, or you know, jump around however you want, but I'm going to do all three of these actions. Now, two of these are pretty simple. I'm going to grab whatever the um, financial, the yellow volunteer I've got can grab, and I'm going to grab whatever the blue, this blue collar volunteer can grab for me. And remember, that was decided over here. Yellow and blue, some fuel, and some water. So that means I take some of my little cubes here to indicate I now have one fuel and one water that I can use to solve problems and complete objectives. So that was two of my three cards. And remember, the other one over here was the doctor. And now the doctor says, I got to spend one medicine to get somebody out of the hospital. Here's the problem. I don't have medicine, but as part of setup, everybody starts with one battery. Batteries are wild cards. You can think of them as generators uh, so that they can stand in for anything. Need some medicine? A uh, generator to keep you know medicine or food cool is going to be particularly handy. Uh, batteries can keep your tools running. So batteries are wild cards. I started with it. I'm going to use this right now as medicine to be able to use my doctor's ability to get somebody out of the hospital. All right. So uh, uh, now all I've got is fuel and um, oh and water. So but I'll worry about that later. Now, who am I going to get out of the hospital? I can get this volunteer who, as you can see, can grab two things, depending on where the blue die rolls. Or I can get my leader, who's, a, who's very, very cool, because he can give me one battery every time I activate him. So that's pretty cool. Ah. I think I'm, I'm going to recruit my leader. I'm going to get the, I'm going to, the doctor took care of the leader. My leader has now joined the ranks of the rest of my hand here. And... I score three victory points. One, two, three. Remember, I'm in a race to score 75 points. So I just uh, brought him back from the brink, and that got me three points. If I brought this guy back, it would have only gotten me two. So the victory points plus being able to get batteries. I mean, grabbing two items, they're both really helpful to have in a pinch. But as it is, I'm going to bring my leader out for uh, reasons that might become clear. So I have finished deploying my volunteers and specialists. And while Everyone's supposed to do this in turn order. Jen and I found while we're playing, we can do this first thing all simultaneously. We can do this second thing simultaneously as well. Alrighty, but now we move on to step 
three. We can now complete objectives or complete goals. And all right, remember, I have these two goals. I've got these three goals. And I didn't mention, I've also got two other goals. I've got this one, which requires 10 bucks, two um, purple, and two yellow uh, people in a group. You know, so I need some financial people and I need some specials. If I can get all of them together, plus pay $10 as an objective, I will get rid of this blockade, which means for the rest of the game, I can play four cards every round instead of three. And see, now this is interesting because I need two yellows, i.e. financial volunteers. I need two purples, i.e. specialists. I've got two yellows over here. If over the next few turns, I get a couple of purples put into this group as well, and I uh, scrounge up 10 bucks, and I started with four, so if I scrounge up money, I could unlock this sooner than later, which would really speed me up. And remember, um, getting these yellows over here is really nice for this one as well. Even if I can't get those two yellows, two purples, I could go for the two yellows and the red so that I could recruit this guy, although he's not available to me yet. That won't happen um, until step five. We're still in step three. But anyway, so I've got this objective, which I can't do right now. I don't have all that money. I've also got this objective, which uh, requires that I give up four of any one type of resource. And I have a rescue group of two reds and two blues. And hey, look at this. I've got two blues. And I mean, if I put a red over here, I have the group I need. Um, but I would also need four resources. And I haven't built up any resources yet. So that might be tough too. But the important thing is, I have, remember, I have water and fuel, so I'm going to complete this objective. So I'll spend the water and fuel I've got to complete this. And now this guy is going to join my merry band as well, because it says right here, if I can pay that, this card goes into my hand and I get to stabilize a blue region. This guy presumably came from a blue region, and I'm going to stabilize that now. Alrighty. Now, Remember, I started with this one right here on the A, and I can um, basically only stabilize regions that are adjacent, or locations adjacent to where I already am. And right now, I have to stabilize blue. That's perfect, because here's a blue. And so I have stabilized that area very nicely. Now, let's just say I was in a bad situation and there were no blues available to me. Like right now, if I, if I were to try and stabilize a blue again, there's this one that's two away. But from all the others, I have no other place I could stabilize blue. That's where these trucks come in. Whenever I'm trying to stabilize an area, if any of the areas directly adjacent to my current network aren't good enough, I can spend trucks to kind of skip over areas and stabilize whatever I need. By the same token, I didn't mention this, but those trucks could also be used. If I really wanted to get books this turn, I could have used my yellow volunteer, but then paid a truck to not pick up the water, but instead to pick up um, books. If I'd paid two trucks, I could have actually picked up medicine. So these trucks are very, very valuable. And if I ever need more trucks, I can give up victory points to get trucks. So that means if I'm willing to sacrifice victory points, I can always get whatever I need in terms of resources, and I can always grab whatever locations I'm trying to stabilize as well. But anyway, so I've done that, and um, he's done. So can I complete any more objectives? I don't have any medicine. I don't have any food. I don't have this group. I haven't made that. Um, I haven't talked about this yet. This says, to complete this part of Emergency Plan A, I have to do two successful scouting expeditions. One which will bring back um, gasoline or fuel, and one which will bring back just victory points. So now that's something that happens during the scouting phase. I haven't done it yet, so that's impossible. So. During the objective phase, you can complete as many goals as possible. You might be saving up for a really big turn where you do a whole bunch, and sometimes um, completing these goals can trigger chain reactions of other goals. It's very, very cool. But as is, I just completed one goal, which means I've now got two new goals. I've got room for two more objectives I could grab. But I think for now I'm done. Everybody else would, of course, be completing their own objectives by paying whatever resources they've got. Now we move on to scouting. And this is probably the most complex step every round. I can scout one tile from one district. And if I scout, I lose um, somebody from one of my cards, they end up going to the hospital. Because going out and scouting in Hong Kong, in the middle of a blackout that has been raging for 48 hours, the people are terrified, crime is on the rise, there's looting, it's very dangerous to go out scouting. Scouting is a great way to get resources or points, um, but scouting can be dangerous because it means it puts my folks in the hospital. But if they go in the hospital, like say if my leader goes in the hospital again, if I heal him again, I'll get two more points. So, you know, there's upsides and downsides. Alrighty. Plus, if you almost think of this as kind of like a mini deck builder, because I've got all of these people that are available to me, 
Um, strictly speaking, I don't mind so much if I dump some of the lower value ones as I get more high value ones. Um, but anyway, am I going to scout? Now, first of all, the first step of scouting is I look to see what areas I've stabilized. And that means I can peek at the scout tiles of one of the spaces adjacent. So right now, I could peek here, 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 or here. So I could peek at any of those. Let's just go on ahead, just arbitrarily, and peek at these. Now, nobody else gets to see these. And I have to decide now, now that I've seen what I've seen, um, and oh, that was not a good area. Things are very expensive. These are three tough tiles to get. Could I do it? One, two, three, four, five, six. I could do it, though. I, could, I have to decide now whether I'm just going to bail on scouting or whether I'm going to go ahead. If I decide to go ahead, I pick one of these three things that I'm going to try to scout out, and I have to generate scouting points equal to 6, 8, 9, 12, 16, or 18 scouting points to be successful. Now, each one of these tiles basically has two halves. On the top, there's the basic scouting. It's the lower value. 6 gets me two tools, whereas if I could generate 12 scouting um, power total, I would get three tools plus plus four victory points. And you know, by the same token, ooh, this is nice. If I could get nine, I could get four points. Because remember, I've got this objective to do a scouting action. I got it to do, I have to scout and find some fuel, and I have to scout and find some points. So here's some points, but I need nine scouting. Now, that makes me bummed that early on, remember back when I was doing my planning, I could have sent out my scout who would have given me a GPS token. That could have been three of the nine that I need to collect this. But I sent out my doctor instead. And like, ah! But um, when my doctor went out and got the leader, the interesting thing about him is my leader is very good at scouting. My leader generates two strength. All other cards generate just one strength. So... I think I'm going to do it. Um, I'd like to do this one, but I'd need nine. That means if I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, my group who is available to me, the best they can do is seven. I don't have any GPS tokens. I don't have any other bonuses. So the best I could do is seven, which means I can't get to eight or nine. So bows are both impossible to me. So I will go on ahead and try to do this one, which is going to, if I, if I do it, it's going to get me some tools. I'll miss out had have gotten three tools and four points because I'm certainly not getting up to 12. So I take this one and... Uh, the other ones stay face up. Uh, um, now everybody knows what could be scouted in this area. If after I had taken a looky-loo and I had peeked and I decided, yeah, I don't want to do any of these because I don't want anybody to go to the hospital because, remember, as it says over here, somebody who scouts is going to go to the hospital. I don't want anybody to go to the hospital. If I if I wanted to do that, I could just put these back face down and only I know what's there, which introduces like a, a kind of annoying memory element that Jen and I don't like. Jen and I, we just take a cube and put them on the stack to indicate, hey, we know what's there, so we can just go back and peek because it's really annoying to have to try and memorize stuff like that. But anyway, I did choose to scout out. So these other ones are now public knowledge, and I need to generate a total of six. And one, two, three, four, five. I don't have enough just my regular, so I will have to send out my leader, which I'm scared about. I don't want my leader to go back to the hospital because that means he will not be able to get me batteries. But if I want to scout, I need to send him. Now, oh, I should say, I have one more option. Um, if you have decided to scout, but you um, you either can't or don't want to hit the high values, you can do what's called a probe instead, which means you just take the lowest value one, which in this case, and you only it doesn't matter what it says you need in terms of scouting power, you only need a total of four. You can all almost always generate four scouting power. If you go out scouting and if you have at least four, you know you will never fail. But if I probe instead of scout, instead of getting the two tools, I will just flip this over. And what that means is on future turns, this increases my total scouting ability because I've successfully probed that area. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to take a risk. Um, I'm going to do the whole six and get those tools, which I don't even need right now. But you know what? There will be um, situations where I will need them. Like for no other reason, once I complete Emergency Plan A, I unlock a new special ability for the rest of the game. Once per round, I can give up tools to get three points because this whole Emergency Plan, well, I needed fuel, I needed this particular team, I needed to get this supply line, and then from then on, because that Emergency Plan was put into place, tools are worth points. Uh, no doubt because I'm trying to send tools through the supply line using this group, etc., etc. So picking up tools isn't the end of the world because I'll, I'll be, have a good use for them later once I get all three of these objectives done. So I need the six, which means I got to take a chance. I'm sending out the leader and I am sending out four others. And I don't know, I'll send out both these reds, 
Because if I, I mean, I wouldn't mind them going to the hospital so much. But then I still got, and I don't want to send out um, this guy. I just finished him. I'm definitely not sending him out. He's my number one. So it means I'll send out my scout and my mechanic. Oh, this is scary. So that is five people. They've done it. They've gone out. And I have gotten two tools that I'll be able to use later. But remember, scouting is dangerous. Somebody always gets injured. And uh, um, basically, I got to pick randomly who that is. Which is going to be kind of tricky to do with the uh, shuffling. I'm with one hand. Oh, I don't know. D, D, D. And uh, this one. I have no idea what this is. Don't be the leader. Don't be the leader. Be one of those little red volunteers. Be a, be a redneck. Yes! Okay. This. I'm sorry. You did great. I appreciate you very much going out and scouting. Now you're in the hospital. And that's somebody I am probably never going to have my doctor try to bring back because they only give me one point. So everybody else made it back safe and sound. That went as well as I could have hoped. I was afraid to lose my mechanic or my scout or my leader. But I didn't. Hooray! Okay. Nice, 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 and I picked up some batteries. Also, I will keep this scout tile. In the future, if I ever trigger and succeed at another scouting action where I find more tools, that new tool, I'll, I'll get whatever, say this was a one that had more tools on it, I'll get the tools off it, and it'll come over here face down. So it makes me permanently better at scouting in the future. The more, because you saw how, I mean, you, you might need 18 points to get the, uh, 18 scouting points to get this 12 victory points. So if you do a lot of scouting over the course of the game and you get a lot of the same type of scout for the same stuff you just get better at scouting if you get different unique stuff every time you scout well there are points to be had at the end of the game for the more unique scouting tiles that you have collected over the course of the game okay Phew. now these stay face up and of course i was doing this everybody had the opportunity to peek at uh, you know something close to their area and then scout if they wanted to i did it all worked out well so let's move on now to new objectives and this is where i can invest this money into different areas like different neighborhoods that aren't necessary they're too small to be listed on the map these are like big regions and locations like this is a neighborhood this is a neighborhood and this is a neighborhood and to be able to get in there and start helping these people the, you know the, they're represented by these cards what i need to do is spend money you know money to bribe local gang members to go away or money to set up generators or whatever it is that i need to get in which is why when they're in in each of these neighborhoods there are three things waiting that means i need to spend four to establish a foothold and grab one of these cards. Once one of these cards has been grabbed, um, it becomes easier to help in that neighborhood. So the next time it only costs three. And if there's only one card, that means that neighborhood's really been taken care of. And so to get this last one only costs two. Basically, it costs um, one more than the number of cards. So I started with four coins. And so if I wanted, I could spend those four coins to grab any of these. And now here is the one special case thing that happens in a solo game. Um, because, of course, when you're playing with more players, this is a round robin. I, I get something and make things cheaper than my opponent grabs something, and that makes cheaper, for etc., etc. In a solo game, if I don't get anything, if I pass, because you can always pass, you don't have to um, help out these neighborhoods and grab more cards, it'll give you more objectives. If you pass in a solo game, the top right one will just be gone. The rightmost on the top row, it, it you know represents some other uh, group of do-gooders and so that'll just be gone making things cheaper now I do have four bucks and I would like to get this because I am planning on getting this crew put together and I'll need the four bucks to be able to get this which is a much more powerful volunteer collecting whatever the red die provides and it means I'll be able to fill in a red zone which is you look over here I started here I filled in this blue I'd like to fill in this red and keep on working my way up so he makes sense and if I were playing with more players, I might grab him right now because I'd be afraid that other players would snag him. Um, you know, because other people, I mean, I can look around and see, you know, uh, what, what types of groups they're building up. If somebody else had two yellows, chances are they want to grab this guy and I should grab him first. But since I'm playing solo and I know the only one that's going to get grabbed is this one, I'm not in any danger, so I'm going to pass. I'm going to save my money right now because even if I got, well... I could do it though, because if I get this guy on round two, if I deploy my last red worker over here, I'll be able to complete that thing. But here's the thing. At the next step, 
after we're done with objectives is cleanup. And during cleanup, the rightmost card from every neighborhood will automatically go away. Which means this um, getting the trains running, uh, which is an opportunity to, oh, it's another great way to turn tools into points if you get the trains running, which means you have two different objectives to complete. Although, strictly speaking, you only have to complete one. If you complete both of these objectives, you get a bonus five points. But once you've completed just the first one, um, that's good enough to lock in the, the special checkpoint uh, of extra power. So this is going to disappear. This is going to disappear, and this is going to disappear. This is really nice because this guy gets three resources when you send him out. But no, not surprisingly, he needs more resources before to help whatever his neighborhood's problem is before he'll join us and help. So I could get this now, which means I will get it finished next round, guaranteed, but I'll be totally broke. Whereas, remember, I was saying all three of these are going to go away, which means next turn this would only cost three bucks, but I wouldn't be able to do it till... All right, I am going to do it. I didn't think I was going to, but I am going to do it. I'm going to spend a total of four, which is painful. And remember, I had two spaces. If I didn't have any spaces to put objectives, I, I wouldn't be able to take a new one. But as it is, I did. I spent all four of my starting capital. That's painful which puts me a long ways away from getting the 10 I need for that. But I know I'll be able to finish this one. Although, well, will I? Because I'm going to need to get money. I'm going to need to be able to get that money to finish it. Hmm, what to do? What to do about that? Well, you know what? Next time, I know I can send my mechanic out. And if I send her out with tools, which I have, she'll be able to make enough money. Yeah, okay, I think I got it. All right, so I did lock him in. And then if I was playing with other players... Other players would go, and then I'd be able to go again. But as it is, I'm passing because I'm totes broke now. So, after everybody is done taking new objectives... And remember, since I'm playing the solo game, and I took one, that means this one didn't disappear. We then move on to the cleanup phase. Where, first of all, if we have any food or water lying around, it's going to waste. It means, I mean, people are starving. People are dying of thirst out there, right? You know, certainly in the case of thirst. And, you know, um, and if we just sit on, the game does not encourage us to stockpile and sit on food and water. And that means when we get to the cleanup phase, if we have any food or water that we did not use for objectives, we will now get rid of it automatically. You cannot hold on to it. And we'll turn food into money and we'll turn water into money or or into GPS tokens, depending. Alrighty. Now, as it is, I don't have any food or any water. I don't have anything going away, so I can't convert it into money. And now, um, if I have any objective cards that I think I'm just never going to get done and I want to clear up room for other objective cards, I could jettison one, but I have plans on finishing both of those. So I'll skip that and now discard the rightmost card of each display. Bye 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 Even if this were over here, I would discard this, this, and this. So these are all gone. There is a ticking clock. Even if players are never grabbing objective cards, um, the they're still going away very, very quickly. And as soon as any of these neighborhoods is completely empty out, i.e. all of it, all their objectives are gone, we create a new neighborhood by drawing three more cards and refilling that particular row. All righty. So that was it for cleanup. Now we secure districts. And what that means is, well, I've started to. Um, you, know, you can see, this is a district right here. It's completely surrounded by all these. If I were to get every single one of these individual locations secure, i.e. putting a cube on it, then the district would be secure, and I would score a lot of points. This is a big one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's the biggest one. I'd score 14 points. Now, as it is, what I'm planning on doing is coming around here and then coming up here and over here and over here. And eventually, I might want to do these ones as well because then I could secure this huge district. And when you secure a district, any of you, there will be no more scouting. It's totally safe to go in there, so there's no more opportunities for scouting, but you score a lot of points for securing all the surrounding areas. Uh, you know, Pretty big achievement for a humble community organizer that we started out as because we're not big corporations. We're just people trying to get people into the right place. We're just normal folks trying to help out. So, uh, as it is, I have not secured. You know, I mean, if I had started over here and I filled this and this in, this district would be secured and I would score. But it doesn't matter. I'm starting over here because I've got my core objectives I have to complete because I'm playing the solo game. Remember, you could win this game playing against multiplayers and completely ignore the emergency plan and focus on other stuff because there's lots of ways to score points. But anyway, as it is, no districts have been secured. And now, finally, the last thing we do in a round, refresh hand, then carry out check mark actions. Now, if my hand of cards is one to or zero to four cards, if I have zero to four cards left in my hand, I get to refresh. 
Unfortunately, I've got one, two, three, four, five. That means I cannot refresh my hand now. If I could, if I, uh, you know, and this is because I recruited somebody. If I had, I recruited somebody and I got my, I completed an objective, that's why I had so many cards. If I hadn't done those things, I'd be down to four cards right now. And that means I'd be able to call back this group because it's the biggest one. Um, right. But as it is, since I've got five, I cannot. Now, that's okay. I've got enough people. That's the thing. You know, back in my headquarters, which is my apartment, I guess, I've got enough people on hand that I don't feel the need to call these people back in out from the, you know, from the streets where they're doing good work. So I don't get to do this. And because of that, I do not. If I, if I can and choose to refresh my hand, I can then carry out check mark actions. And check mark actions are like this. Once I've completed emergency plan A, I will have given myself the check mark action of converting tools into points. And uh, let's see. Yeah, here's uh, you know, bring tools to the farmer. This is another one. We're turning tools into food. Or um, nope, nope. Yeah, those are the only uh, check mark ones right now. But other ones will show up over time. So anyway, in this case, I'm not refreshing my hand. Therefore, I'm not getting to do any bonus actions, but that's okay because I haven't earned any of those bonus actions yet anyway. And, um, right, that was the first round. Um, and, folks, I think that should give you a pretty good idea of the basics of Blackout Hong Kong. But if you'd like to watch a little bit more, another round, or maybe two, I don't know, depends on how much strength I've got, you can go on ahead and hit that eye in the top right corner screen and go to the extended playthrough, or instead you can go to Final Thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.